And now it is time for the part of the video where Max decides to poorly sing a silly song. If you want to serve your country, if a gun can make you smile If you want to take down the Nazis In an American style Then boy do I have a game for you! Wolfenstein, 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 Wolfenstein. Mech armies, crazy leads, gotta be Wolfenstein. Guns galore, lots of war, mostly gore, Wolfenstein. Shooting fast, running past, this won't last, one son. There's never ever 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 a game like one son. There's never ever 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 a game like one son. It's time for Wolfenstein! That's right, Wolfenstein, the new order, because nothing says being on the force of good like punching Hitler. I mean, look at Rory go. He was going to kill me. Shut up, Hitler. Rory, take Hitler and put him in that cupboard over there. Now, do it. Right. Putting Hitler in the cupboard. But it is true, Nazis are definitely one of the epitomes of evil. And for some reason, they never die. We have actual Nazis. Space Nazis, zombie Nazis, high-tech Nazis, Nazis from the moon, vampire Nazis, and now we got robo-Nazis. But anyway, I chose Wolfenstein the New Order because, frankly, I wasn't aware there was any other games in the series other than this one, which I had played for not even five minutes, including obtaining this footage. And since I almost never played any shooter games, Wolfenstein just seemed like fun. So, let's get started. What's the story? You've stayed with us for 14 years. It's 1960. I have to find a way to contact the U.S. military. I gotta find my unit, let them know I'm alive and ready for duty. There's no more war. War ain't over. Look at all these Nazis walking around. They won. It's over. The Nazis rule the world now. They are everywhere. Everywhere. What about the U.S.? They surrendered. Well, then I'll find the resistance. I'll find them and I'll help them fight. Oh, no, no, no. More resistance. Everyone is captured. Huh. Well, that about sums it up. But let's back up. The game starts with us doing an awesome air assault on this hit. Wait. <laughs> I, I think my German accent's kicking in a second. Let me try that again. The game starts with us doing an awesome air assault on Death's head. Er, Death's head. The head of Death, the CEO of the morgue. The, is, is his head dead? Eh, oh, whatever. He's a Nazi scientist, we're going to stop him. Anyway, we get there. Things are looking. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Hang on, hang on. Anyway, we get there. Things are looking grim, but we are starting to win, and you get captured. And then, now that you are captured, you are given an incredible morality decision. Which one of the two people I barely know should be killed off? I, I don't get it. Why am I faced with this decision? Why is this decision even necessary? I have to choose one of them to die. I mean, either the private that I apparently care a lot about, but I don't really know, or my best friend that I apparently knew about from the war. That I don't. I don't really know either of these people. What am I supposed to do here? Eh. I chose my best friend, and later on he yelled at me for choosing him. Thanks a lot, jerk. I sure made me feel better. Actually, doing some 10 second research, I found the difference between the two. On one side, with your best friend, you can gain health upgrades, and you learn how to wiretap, while on the other side, you can lockpick and you get armor upgrades. Personally, I think health upgrades would be better, but that's just me. Oh, and there's different cinemas. You know, if you're like, really feel like playing the game twice, just have mostly the same missions and a little bit of voice acting. I, I didn't really see the need to. Anyway, you choose one, you try to escape, kind of fail to do so, and get a piece of shrapnel stuck in your head and turned into a vegetable. But you live somehow in a rehabilitation center for like 14 years. Wow. That sucks. But hey, somehow none of my muscles atrophied. I haven't lost any skills in killing people. And I have perfect control of myself. No lapses, memory problems, brain. No, no. 
That's pretty convenient. The hospital you were put into was being shut down and everyone inside was killed. Because that's what Nazis do! You escape, kill everyone, and save the one nurse. Spoiler, she's a love interest. You then go to a relative's house to get the rundown that we are in a hopeless situation with no resistance. Or any form of rebellion at all. After some interrogation with someone you just happened to connect, you discover the location of a prison camp with whichever of your friends lives, and then you and him escape to find the resistance. Wait. Hey, heck, resistance? Hey, hang on, I was told there wasn't one of these. With the resistance, you then decide to mess with the Nazis, starting with stealing high tech helicopters, during which you find super secret Jewish technology. Then let yourself become captured in a concentration camp to rescue said Jewish scientists, and then ultimately destroy the facility. Wait. I just casually got captured and immediately broke everyone out. Why hasn't anyone done this before? What's with this crazy lady and her weird psychopathic questions that don't make much sense just to freak me out? I don't like her at all. She's scary. Anyway, with this science help you come into a submarine and find a cache of Jewish technology. Then promptly impersonate a science. Ah, it's going again, isn't it? it it's going again. It, sorry, hang on. I'll get over it. Then probably impersonate a scientist, go to the moon, and steal nuclear launch codes. No big deal, I mean, it's only space. Unfortunately, by the time you got back, the Nazis took down the Resistance HQ and captured a bunch of people that probably were your friends. After you rescue a bunch of them, you decide to attack Death's Head base with the launch codes and super tech, in which you finally find Death's Head yourself, have an awesome battle, and then nuke the castle in a very dramatic and awesome patriotic fashion. Well, that's the story in a nutshell. Now let's get into the- Why is this thing keep turning on? Okay. That's the story in a nutshell. Let's get to the gameplay. Now, keep in mind, the last Lost of Goodness shooter I played was Half-Life and Bioshock, and those are more sci-fi shooters than, you know, modern-day shooters, like Call of Duty or Modern Warfare, which I haven't played in ages. I mean, they've just never interested me at all. So, I'm pretty behind on what is, you know, par for the course in modern shooters. However, some of the things in this game really stood out to me, despite my lack of knowledge. The first is the idea of picking up armor. I personally liked that, and also how you regenerate health only slightly. However, it was kind of odd picking up tons of helmets and pieces of metal, somehow strapping themselves to me, and then protecting myself. The next thing was the fact that I could hold two two-handed weapons. I mean, that thing looked huge. I'm carrying two of them. However, while in this mode you were slower, couldn't look down the scope, and took forever to reload. But since all the weapons have different shooting modes, this leads to a lot of different strategies. Whether you want one weapon or two for accuracy and speed or just all out power. My personal favorite weapon was definitely the AR Marksman. Whether in laser mode, sniper mode, or using just both of them in open fire. Another thing that also interests me was the idea of leaning. Is this a new thing? I'm really not sure if it is, I have no idea. However though, I really enjoyed it since it added a new element to the shooter. Since not only was I leaning, but so were all the Nazis. Seriously, we did that the entire game. We were worse than Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, we just run, lean, and kill. It's that easy. But while those are some of the more unique things to me at least, I really did enjoy playing a shooter again. Trying to strategically sneak to take down commandos. Wait, 9999! Oops. Or trying to figure out how to single handedly take down an entire enemy base. The tactics involved were very fun, even if I was for no good reason ridiculously stronger than they are. But it's not like they were underpowered. The different enemies I found were also pretty fun, starting with probably the most signature, Robo Dogs and Robo Saber Cats. I know that's not what they were called, but that's what I called them. And those guys were fast, not to mention a pain if you weren't prepared. And while there was a multitude of basic grunts, there are many other hard ones, like the fire rocket troopers, or even the infinite amount of robots, like the drones, guards, heavies, or the super soldiers, all of which were tricky to kill, or something even more fun, the Bolzgeschog. Uh, the Stomper. I know my German accent's terrible, but saying Stomper's easier. 
but that was a very fun boss fight. Overall though, the enemies were not only diverse, but individually intelligent. They would work together in teams or on their own with unique strategies. This added a whole other level of difficulty to the game. Another thing I would like to talk about is the game's signature weapon. You know, almost every game has one. In this game, it's a laser gun fuck! Er, I think I said that right. Which started off as a pathetic device that I could barely get through a melt fence. Come on. Come on. Why do I suck at this so much? Over time, grew into a very powerful weapon that was capable of literally evaporating enemies, or taking down very large enemies in a matter of moments. Plus, these little convenient Tesla battery stations are everywhere for some reason. I mean, I wish we charged my phone work like this. That'd be great. But lastly, there's a lot of neat tidbits and details all over this game. From all the different artwork and all the different schematics and details they put into the labs, from newspaper clippings in like 10 different languages that somehow I'm able to read, to being able to play a level from the original game with the new controls, which I admit was pretty fun, to tons and tons of odd little collectibles, trophies, upgrades, and many other things. These cool little things unlock stuff like concept art, songs, but if you could decrypt the Enigma codes, you could get different game modes. Basically, all the different game modes focus on making the game harder on you. Whether taking away the heads up display, making all the enemies really smart, giving you only one life, giving you a lot of ammo but making them overpowered, the list goes on. And frankly, I didn't feel like playing the game again. I mean, sorry. In the end though, coming from a guy who doesn't really like many shooters, Wolf of Sun Nora was something fresh and fun, outlandish enough to be interesting, but still only true to what makes a shooter enjoyable. Personally though, I didn't feel like needing to play the game multiple times through, as many of the different things, the collectibles, the bonus modes, the fact that there's two different storylines, if you want to call them that, kind of made you feel like you need to play through the game multiple times. I personally didn't feel the need to, I mean, I felt like once was enough. Not to say that it wasn't fun, just I felt like it would have been repetitive. You know, saying I already did all this. But in the end though, I couldn't help but feel some patriotic pride, single-handedly taking down the entire Nazi Empire. Seriously. Those other guys didn't do diddly. It was all me. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's a little bit different game than I normally do, but I'm well overdue for a shooter. If you want to check out the other game I reviewed, which is Don't Start, you can click here. Somewhere. Or if you want to check out the video games I'm currently completely playing through, you can check here. Wherever that is. I'm gonna pretend that's Skyrim, that's Ruby, and that's Majora's Mask. Get an order, dang you! Yeah, you better. Anyway, though, I hope you check them out or leave a suggestion if you have an idea for future review videos I should do. I'm pretty much open to everything. But until then, see you later.